Hey everyone, my name is Benrin, and in this video we're going to build a web scraper that uses WAM 3.1 to get information from pages like this one and convert it into structured information into CSV or Pandas data frame files like this one. Let's get started. If you want to follow along, there is a complete text tutorial that is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers, and it is within the AI bootcamp and then on the projects on the bottom of that we scrape web content with LOM. Here you can find the complete source code along with complete explanation on what and how to do in order to reproduce the steps from this tutorial. So if you want to support my work, please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro. Thank you. Our web scraper is going to give you structured output from web page data using two main steps. The first one is going to get the HTML and then convert it into readable markdown file or content. And then it's going to get the markdown content, give us give it to an WAMA 3.1 model and with some prompts and structured output from the pedantic model, we are going to get the final structured output that we want. So in order to complete the first step, we are going to be using the play right library which will allow us to render the html or get the html from a given web page and even if this web page is using javascript such as react or angular or other library playwright is going to be able to use a chrome that is headless chrome in our case and get the html content of the completely rendered page Next, we're going to be using HTML to text in order to get the markdown from the HTML content of the page. So here is how to set up this. I'm going to install the Playwright library. This is the latest version as of now. Then I'm going to be installing the HTML to text library and then Langchain Grok, uh, which is going to be allowing us to get the WAMA 3.1 model and use it to extract the final structured output. Then I'm going to install the Play Write library using only the Chromium extension or sub package, if you will. This will allow us to use the, only the Chromium headless browser. Next, I have a couple of imports. And more importantly, here, I'm going to be using the async Play Write library. So this is in a way used so that we are in a Google Club notebook, or this is the environment of the tutorial that we are going through. Next, I'm going to be adding a sample user agent. This is going to be given to the web page as an agent for the user once the scraping is actually going to happen. And here I'm using pretty much a later, or I think this is the latest version of Chrome. And this is essentially simulating Mac OS with the latest version of Chrome. Of course, you can change this to whatever you like. And uh, yeah. Please don't scrape sites that don't want you to scrape them. Uh, yeah, you might get into trouble. Next, I'm going to start the Playwright library using the await Playwright start. Uh, one important thing is that I want this nest async IO to be synchronized or applied to the Google Club environment that I'm using. Again, this is done so you can use the Playwright library within a Google Club notebook. Then I'm going to launch the browser itself. This is done by playwright.chromium.launch. This will essentially give us an instance of the browser that is again programmable, programmable using the Playwright library. And then I'm going to initialize a new context in which I'm going to pass in the user agent. So this will be essentially the config that I'm going to use when the browser or Playwright is doing the requests to the pages that we want. Next, I'm going to get a new page by calling context new page. Note that everything here is using the await. And uh, this is thanks to the nest async IO. Then I'm going to essentially direct the page to the playwright original page and then get the content of that page. Here is how the actual HTML of that page looks like. Uh, you're going to see that this is a lot of HTML and it's pretty hard to read through this. So if we give this as information to our LUAMA 3.1 model, you first are going to give it too much tokens, and then you're going to be giving 
a lot of uh, information that the model doesn't need at all. And just as a reference, this is how the current Playwright landing page looks like. Uh, you have a lot of features and explanations along with a tagline and some images. So it's not that complex, but still the HTML on it is quite a lot. We get the HTML from the Playwright landing page. And after that, I'm going to be using HTML to text library in order to get, create this markdown content of that page, which we're going to then give to the uh, LOM. And here I'm going to be initializing this HTML to text. I don't want to ignore the links. And then I'm going to convert or handle this by passing in the raw HTML to the HTML to text library. And this is the result. As you can see, this is much clearer. Uh, it contains much less information and the links are still here along with the text. And at least for this page, it appears that the HTML to text library is doing a good job on formatting the actual text. So with the markdown content that we have thus far, I'm going to be initializing the WAMA 3.1, the 70B model on using the chat grok. Uh, so from the Grok library API, and then I'm going to be passing in the Grok API key that I have. Currently, this is free, so you can use this LLM or you can set up the chat OAMA. So you can use the same model with your walk, your local OAMA instance. Uh, let me know that if you want to include those instructions to the tutorial as well. So you can essentially run this totally locally. And then I have I'll have a pretty simple script, uh, sorry, prompt. You're an expert text extractor. You extract information from web page content, always extract data without changing it in any other output. So I don't want this model to add anything else uh, based on the content or format type that I'm going to be asking as a result. Then I'm going to be building this create script prompt function, which I'm going to be passing in essentially markdown content such as this one. And this prompt will be very simple, extract the information from the following web page. And I'm just surrounding it by these back quotes. I found that when you surround or essentially eliminate the need for the AOM to distinguish between the different parts of the information, they tend to behave a bit better. So next, in order to get the structured output that I want, I'm going to be using this function LOM with structured output. And to that, I'm going to be passing a pedantic model that I'm going to extend from the base model from pedantic. And here are the fields that I want the our scraper to extract from the web page. I want the name of the project. I want the tagline of the project. Then I want a short list of features or benefits that the project have. So in order to use this, I'm going to again code the with structured output and I'm going to pass in the class name project information. This is created by me. And then I will have a, this instance of the LOM that is enhanced, if you will, with the, the structured output. So in order to call the model itself, I'm going to be calling the dot invoke method. And here I'm going to be passing the messages. First is going to be the system prompt. And then I'm going to create a user prompt using the markdown content from the playwright landing page. And here is the extraction result. And you can see that we get the name, the tagline, and the benefits of the model. Pretty impressive, right? This is essentially what you need to set up in order to start with your scraping endeavors. But I'm going to be have giving you this helper function, which essentially goes to the web page using the Playwright library and then uses the HTML to text in order to convert the content to Markdown. And I'm going to scrape some SAS landing pages and we're going to see together how does this setup performs. So here you can see that in roughly 23 seconds, I have scraped 
five different landing pages and after that i'm creating this pandas data frame as you can see right here and let's see the first one uh, it's called video gen let me open up this one for you so the landing page says generate videos in seconds with ai introducing video gen the world's first ai that can create and edit videos for you and it has a lot of testimonials right here do you value your time so do we no more retakes just perfect audio add edits with ease etc i would say that these are the features and you can see that the video gen is the name of this project generate videos in seconds with ai correct and then these are the actual benefits one click video creation three million copyright free assets say for commercial use no more retakes just perfect audio okay this is one of the one that we've seen add edits with ease cost saving on video production etc okay i would say that this is doing a good job on taking a look at the benefits not as good as one might imagine but of, of course you can try out with the prompting and get a bit more of the benefits and description of those and finally i'm going to save the project df to a csv file the next example is going to be a listing of cars that are from different makes and models you can see that we have a wide variety of cars right here and let's see how good our model is at extracting information from this list of cars i have the url that i've just shown you and from there i'm going to be using the fetch page function i'm going to get the content of the page and from this you can see that we have a lot of information right here it is a markdown but still it's quite a lot of data and from that we are going to be using our model in order to get the listings or the car listings information and in order to get those i'm going to be using two different models the first one essentially is going to be list of listings and here is the information that i want for each car i want the make the model the horsepower of the car the price the mileage in kilometers year a year of the registration that is and then a, a new url to the car that we're going to be having a look at and here i also like to provide some examples in order for our model to be a bit better so this is the base model and from that i'm again i'm adding the car listings and for the structured output i'm going to be again starting with the base lm and then i'm going to be passing in the car listings which will create the relationship with the car listing next i'm going to execute pretty much the same thing but this time i'm going to be passing in the auto content the extractions for the car listings look like this you can see that we have populated the make the model the horsepower etc but you will notice that some of the examples actually contain a lot more than necessary information for the model itself so in order to circumvent this or try to fix it i'm going to be applying this filter model function to the model com from our data frame that is created from this and in order to have this model processing function i'm going to be essentially replacing all of the non-alphanumerical characters with a space and then I'm going to be splitting by spaces and get only the first three or four. Uh, yeah, the first three examples right here. So this is essentially how I got the model. The horsepower looks quite all right. I have the Aston Martin advantage and pretty much all of this information, except for some examples when we don't have the year, perhaps this information appears to be looking pretty good. But let me check. Uh, for example the second one porsche 991 gt3 with 500 horsepower 178 911 price and here is the list uh, you can see that the bmw is at first spot here we have the porsche 991 and here is the price this seems to be matching 2018 and then 500 horsepower so it appears that the scraper is actually working quite well and 
the final step is going to be to save the listings into a CSV file. So again, you can try out and play with the data for yourself. So this is it for this video. You can now build a web scraper that uses Playwright and HTML to text along with WAMA 3.1 to get from HTML content to a structured output and use this as a data analysis step in your pipelines. Of course, you need to be careful what sites you can actually scrape and which sites are not allowed for scraping. But if you're careful with that, you can pretty much get a lot of data using this approach. Of course, in production grade systems, you might want to use a lot more techniques in order to get a vast amounts of data, but this appears to be working quite well for some small experiments. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down in the description. And once again, if you want to have a complete access to the tutorial and the code of this video, please go to ML Expert Pro. I'm going to link the, uh, the tutorial down into the description and in the first comment as well. And go and subscribe to the Pro version and you get everything along with the text tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.